Hello everyone, these are your Central Florida real estate numbers for October. They technically cover till the end of September. Now it's no secret that rates have continued to increase. Affordability, it's not really that great. And I've been really curious to see what's gonna give inventory, days on market, you know, demand, all these different things. And those are the things that you'd wanna know if you're buying a home, selling a home, or even own a home here in Central Florida. Hey, when it's Race Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker. And let's jump right into what is having the biggest impact in the market, and that would be interest rates. So this is Mortgage News Daily. Remember, everyone's rate is gonna be different based on credit score and all these things. So this is just a gauge, but they're saying the national average for rates are about 8% for a 30 year fixed. And you look at a 15 year about 7.29. And if you look a little graph here for kind of the direction, obviously rates have just continued to increase to where, you know, they're almost 8%. Now, what does that mean? It means that rates continue to increase. The Fed has stuck, you know, as far as held their gun, so to speak, or held the position that they wanted to keep rates higher for longer and that they've done and the market has even started to price in maybe one more fed funds rate increase later this year we'll see i personally think the fed won't raise rates but i thought this was really telling this is a, a uh, fannie mae sentiment on buying a home and in september 16 percent of consumers reported that it's a good time to buy a home matching the all-time low set last year which means that 84 percent of people think it's not a good time to buy a home. So with higher rates, lower affordability, and really, you know, a lot of people thinking it's not a great time to buy a home, you would expect that to reflect in the numbers. And we are starting to see that. So if we look right here, median price, this is one of the things that I get asked about most, is currently sitting around 370. This is again for Central Florida. From August to September, it's only fallen about 5,000. And you would expect median income to fall this time of year because we get into winter, winter, prices tend to get softer. And so we'd expect a small increase. But if you look year over year, median price is up. And so I've said this in lots of videos. We're gonna look at this for a second, but it's a supply side problem, not a demand problem. Demand is low. And there's really not a meaningful way to increase supply, at least in my opinion. Some other notable numbers here. If you look right now, we sit with 6,758 homes on the market. That is an increase of 10.5%, which is a significant change. We're going to look at that. And days on market, like you would expect, of inventory is going up from 2.19 to 2.64. And then I always like to cover this because I get asked all the time. Uh, Foreclosure homes, there were 16 distressed home sales. That's down a little bit. And new listings, meaning new homes coming on the market, fell 2.1%. That's really important because it's showing that even though inventory is increasing, the amount of homes coming on the market is not increasing. It's just that because rates are higher and affordability, demand is continuing to fall, which obviously, even if inventory stays the same, creates more inventory because less people are wanting to buy. And there's really almost no distressed home sales on the market because everybody has a ton of equity. Now, when we jump into the numbers here, so total homes on the market are 6,758. That's broke down uh, by 4,958 single family homes, 1,090 condos, and 710 townhomes. And you can see uh, inventory went from 6,115 to 6,758. So that was that 10.5% increase. But at the same time, new contracts have fallen. And if we look at sales close, that is also falling. And interestingly, if you look at new listings, meaning new homes that are getting put on the market, that is falling as well. Meaning that, like we talked about before, even though there is an increase in supply, and it doesn't have to do that there's more people wanting to sell their home or in distress. It just means that the buyer pool shrinks as rates go up, and that does allow that inventory to creep up, which, however we get inventory, we're in a bad need of inventory, but obviously if less people wanna buy because rates are higher, that will start to trickle up. And then when you look right here, interest rates, and you can see right here that rates actually have a big factor to do with this. Obviously the biggest factor, you can look at rates 2.8, 6% in September of 2021, 6.32% in September 2022, and now 7.29%, I mean, they're just average rates, and now we're closer to 8%. And then last but not least, if you look at months of supply, you would expect that months of supply would go up in the winter, which it typically does, and then it falls, and then we're back up, you know, as we get into the winter months. So what can you get from this information? 
a couple things. One, you know, really doesn't get a meaningful change in the market as far as like, is it a buyer's market or seller's market till we start getting five or six months of inventory. Remember in like 2008, the only really crash that we've known, we had almost 30 months of inventory. Right now we're sitting at less than three. And I would say inventory would need to get at six months and stay there for a while for it to shift more to a buyer's market. And as long as we're under three or four months, sellers are gonna be in control. Now, what, what should you do with this information if you're buying a home, selling a home, and you're trying to figure out what is the right thing to do? Now, that is the million dollar question. And I want to say at the time of this recording is right when um, there's been a recent bombing with uh, Palestine and Israel and all this economic stuff going on. And the reason I bring that up, not to be political, is that there are black, black swan things in the market that we can't control. And no one can predict those things like COVID. And though I don't think the, you know, the issues going on in the Middle East unless they really progress to a huge level or are going to overall affect the housing market or interest rates, you could see how there are just hard things to predict. But other than that, there are ways to look at data to figure out what's likely. And so if I was a seller, I'd be looking at supply. So yeah, when you're selling a home and supply is going up, that is working not in your favor. But if supply is going up because demand is falling, that means really nothing has changed you know, drastically in the market. It's always softer when you get into the winter months. So supply, is anything gonna happen to make their meaningful amount of supply in the market anytime soon? And I would say no, in fact, it's probably going to get worse because builders are starting to pull back, especially smaller builders, because they're worried about demand. They're also worried with rates being higher, that will make people obviously not wanna buy, that's demand. And so they're pulling back. And so we're likely to get, and this will catch up with us in the winter, so we're likely to get a decrease in small home builds. New, big builders are trying to dump the inventory that they have. And the higher rates stay for longer, that demand will fall, and supply, as far as, is not really going to change because there's no one that's going to put their home on the market if they have a 2 or 3 or 4% interest rate, which is a huge chunk of the market. Almost 60% of the people have rates under 4%. I think that's actually closer to 70%. So not a big change. There's really, in my opinion, no big change coming in supply anytime in the near future. Rates would probably have to get under 5% for people to want to do a lateral move or move up, right? Get a bigger square footage, buy a pool, all those things. They're going to need lower rates to want to trade in the rate that they have. Now, demand is a little bit different because demand is directly related to rates. And every time we've hit 6%, um, demand as far as mortgage applications have went up. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all of them predicting rates to be closer to 6% by the end of the year. I don't know, but the trend is definitely likely to be down. As that falls, demand is going to go up. If supply stays the same and demand shoots back up some, then that's going to increase prices, which is why Zillow, Redfin, Black Knight, all these companies are predicting higher prices because they see the thing that's most likely to change is demand when rates fall, but rates are likely not to fall close to 5%, which would you know release a lot of supply. So again, you're a seller, still a seller's market, good time to sell. If you're a buyer, if you could, if I could put you in a time machine, you could buy now or down the road, you would want to come back and buy now because there's going to be more demand. There's not going to be a lot of inventory. There's going to be a lot of competition and you definitely can refinance when and if rates fall. That's advice, you know, I give home buyers all the time. It's the same advice as always. I will say, do not try to time the real estate market. You almost will never win. So that's what the data says for now. I'll keep following it here. As more information becomes available, the moves the market as always, uh, I'll put that information on these monthly videos. Have a great day, great week, and great month. This is Rach Robinson, your favorite Florida mortgage broker. I'll talk to you soon.